Welcome back to a new tutorial, Benoit Farin for Ben Explorer. In this episode, we will go over the Tools panel. We will look at several editing tools, and I'm hoping that by the end of this module, you'll have a basic understanding of how to use these tools in order to edit, trim, and move clips around on the timeline. I recommend that you download the tutorial files from my site. For this exercise, I opened the project The Tools panel. I opened the project from the tutorial files. I've stored those files on my desktop, as you can see from the path here. If you have a different version of Premiere than the one I used to create this project, then you may be asked to convert the project. You probably will also need to relocate the media. For more details on how to do this, see Get ready with the tutorial files. Let's take a look at the tools on the tools panel. So far, we sticked to the selection tool to perform most of our edits. This is the default tool. The selection tool is accessed by clicking this icon on the tools panel or by hitting V on the keyboard. With the selection tool, we can perform basic selections and edits. We can select specific edit points. We can perform simple trims. For instance, I'll trim the end of this clip like so. I'll click Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac to undo this action. I can also trim the start of that clip. See? Now I will undo again. We can also select a clip and move it around within the timeline. I will drop it later in time here. I'll undo again. I can move a clip to another track like so. Let me undo again. I can also select multiple clips, click this one, hit shift and click on that one and move them anywhere on the timeline like that. I'll undo again. You can also marquee select several clips like so and then you'd move them on the timeline as we did before like that and I'll undo. The pointer changes shape according to the tool selected. The selection tool shows as an arrow. Now let's move on to the next tool. This is the track selection tool. Long press on the tool and notice the flyout. The tool has two orientations, forward and backward. You can tell that the tool opens a stack of subtools. Notice the arrow down here. It indicates that when you long press on the tool, you'll get access to several additional tools. We see two here. To select tracks, select forward, click this icon or hit A. Notice that the pointer changes shape to reflect the new tool. This tool will let us quickly select all of the clips in a sequence, either forward or backward. Let's try here, for instance, any clips to the right of the cursor position will be selected, including those that would play at that position or at that time. So those here are selected because they are at the right of our cursor position, as well as the soundtrack here, but also this clip and those, because you can see they would play at this time. You'll probably want to play a little in order to get used to this tool. The track backward tool, or Shift A, works the same way and selects all the clips to the left of the current position. So when I click here, those clips are selected. Or if I click here, then these clips are now selected. Notice that the tool works as a multi-track selector. All the clips to the right or to the left of the area I click on are selected and this for each track. I can also select the clips on the same track or, in other words, only select the clips on a single track. Let's switch back to the Track Select Forward tool. Click A or click here. Now depress the Shift key. Notice this changes the tool to a single track selection tool. And things work similarly, but on a single track. So if I click here, then the clips to the right of the cursor on this track are all selected. Or here, or even here. Now let's move on to the next tool and choose the Ripple Edit tool. 
hit B on the keyboard or click this icon. Ripple Edit is a trim tool. It is used to trim a clip and ripples the rest of the clips in the timeline. The Ripple Edit tool closes the gap between the two edit points and it preserves all edits to the left or right of the trimmed clip. We will go in greater details in a later tutorial, but I want to run a quick demo so we can see the tool in action. Let's first simplify our timeline to get a better visual. Select the three clips on track 1. You can do this by dragging around those three clips like that, and then drop them on the new item to create a new temporary timeline. Double click on the new timeline and this opens it as a new tab in the timeline panel. You can work on several timelines within the same project. As you can see here, we have two timelines. Now select the Ripple Edit tool from the Tools panel or hit B. Position the tool at this edit point and notice that depending on whether the cursor is placed slightly to the right or slightly to the left of the edit point, the tool switches to a ripple in or ripple out selection. We will trim the end of the clip bikers on street. So position the cursor here and make sure that the cursor is at the left of the edit point and that the arrow points to the left. Now click and drag the mouse to the left. Now release the button. The clip bikers on street is now shorter and the clips to the right are moved in in time leaving no gaps between the clips. What we just did here can also be done with the selection tool. I'll quickly demonstrate that. Undo the last change, hit Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac, and click on the selection tool. Position the cursor at the edit point. Make sure that the arrow points to the left. Click and drag to shorten the left clip. Release the button. So now the left clip is trimmed, but a gap is left between these two clips. Right click the gap and select Ripple Delete. The clips to the right are now brought in in time. So what we did in two steps with the selection tool can be done in a single step with the Ripple Edit tool. Select the Ripple Edit tool again or hit B. Undo twice to undo the Ripple Delete and the last trimming action. Let's go through one additional example position the cursor here between the last two clips. In the last example, we trimmed the end of a clip. This time, we will trim the start of a clip. This works the same way. Make sure that the arrow points to the right, click and drag to the right. We are making the last clip shorter. Release the mouse. Notice that the clip to the left wasn't edited this time, but the clip to the right is now shorter. Let's go on to the Rolling Edit tool. Long press the Ripple Edit tool and select Rolling Edit or use the keyboard shortcut N. Rolling Edit is another trim tool used for fine tuning and adjustments. This tool rolls the edit point between two clips. It trims the in point of one and the out point of the other while leaving the combined duration of the two clips unchanged. You perform a rolling edit by moving an edit point either forward or backward in the sequence. Select this edit point, click and drag to the left. Now, just before we release the mouse, notice the total length of the timeline. Check the length of the left clip and the right clip. Now, release the mouse. The total length of the timeline remains unchanged. The left clip is shorter. The right clip is longer. With Rolling Edit, we change the edit point of both clips here. I will run a more detailed scenario in a future tutorial. Let's move on to the next tool. Long press the Rolling Edit tool or just hit R and select the Rate Stretch tool. The Rate Stretch tool either speeds up or slows down a clip. The in and out points of the clip remain the same but the duration and speed of the clip changes according to the amount we stretch the clip. Expanding the out point of the clip will slow down the rate of speed. Shortening the clip will speed up the rate of speed. We will go a little deeper into this tool and I'll show you a couple of examples in a later tutorial. 
switch back to the main sequence, to the sequence named the Tools panel, just select it here from the tab on the timeline, or double click on the sequence here on the project panel. We will now look at the Razor tool, click here or hit C. The Razor tool adds a simple edit point by cutting the clip wherever the tool is used. So if I click here on this clip, notice that a new edit point is added. I can now move any portion of this clip anywhere on the timeline. I'll hit Ctrl Z or Command Z to undo the last action. You can also add edit points to each clip across all tracks at one single position. Hold Shift and with the Razor tool click here and notice that it will cut clips across all tracks as long as the clips aren't on a locked track. Let's move on and select the Slip tool or click Y. The slip tool slips or changes the in and out points of a clip. It keeps the time span between the in and out points of the clip constant and it doesn't move the clip on the timeline. While using the slip tool, the program monitor shows you the frame before and after the clip and gives you a live preview of the source in and out points with source timecode. I'll demonstrate this with a quick example, and in order to make things simple, drag a clip, say biker on street, here and create a new timeline. Check the duration of the clip. It's 44 seconds and 25 frames long. Now let's trim this clip by half, also to about 20 seconds in the timeline. Click on the selection tool or hit V on the keyboard, and trim the end edit point by about 22 seconds. Now let's use the slip tool. While we are slipping through the clip, we can determine which 22 seconds of the clip appears in the timeline. Look at the program monitor. The live preview on the left shows the frame at the time of the starting edit point, and the live preview on the right shows the frame at the time of the ending edit point and the difference between the time codes equates to the clip's duration. So when I drag all the way to the right, the clip is rewinded to the start of the clip. Notice that the time code of the start edit point shows zero. And when I move all the way to the left, the time code of the end edit point shows the full length of the original clip. Now we'll switch back again to the main sequence, the tools panel. Just click here. Long press the Slip tool and select the Slide tool or click U. Sliding a clip moves the clip on the timeline but keeps the source in and out points the same. Let's try with this clip. Select Bikers and a Car. Notice that the name does not show but it's that clip here. I'm moving this clip to the left and now to the right and notice that while I'm moving this clip, the two clips that surround it are trimmed simultaneously. The in and out points of the clip I'm moving do not change, but the in and out points of the surrounding clips do change, while ensuring that the combined duration of the three clips and the location of the group in the timeline remain unchanged. So if I release the mouse here, notice that the total duration of the three clips didn't change. Let's try this again. If I move it back, the total duration does not change. I will cover this tool in more details in a later tutorial, as well as explain the preview windows that we see here in the program monitor panel. OK, we still have a few tools to look at. I will now show you the pen tool, but before we do so, select the selection tool here or hit V. Make sure that show video keyframes is enabled in the wrench menu. Click the wrench button and enable show video keyframes if it isn't already. Then expand the track that includes the clip we want to adjust. The connector line that we see here is setting the clip's opacity. Its value currently is 100% opacity. I can drag the connector line vertically to adjust the opacity. As you can see, when I drag the line down, the opacity decreases from 100 down to 0, and when I bring it back up 
to say here the opacity is close to 50%. Now select the pen tool or click P. This tool is used to set or to select keyframes. Keyframes are useful as they let us change the opacity over time. Click here within the first quarter of the clip. The blue dot represents the keyframe we added at this location. Now add another here, so click near the start of the clip and here toward the end to set a third keyframe. Now select the first keyframe and adjust the opacity at this position by clicking the keyframe and drag it down. We will set it at zero opacity. Set the last keyframe and set it to zero opacity as well. Notice that when I preview the clip, the opacity starts at zero, increases to 100 and turns back to zero when the clip ends. You can adjust the position of a keyframe on the timeline by moving it uh, to the desired location. I'd like the second keyframe to be somewhat in the middle of the clip so I can move it here. Now, if I click here by mistake and add an unwanted keyframe, I can remove it by right-clicking and by selecting Delete. The transition is abrupt at this keyframe as you can see here, the opacity increases linearly to this point and as it reaches its maximum value, it decreases linearly. We can smoothen the opacity transition with Bezier curves. Hold the control key or the common key on the back and click this node to turn it to a Bezier and adjust the curve to fine tune the transition at this point. One last thing. To select multiple keyframes, click on the first keyframe, then press the Shift key down and select the second and the third keyframe. To deselect the second keyframe, for example, hold Shift again and click the second keyframe. Now we have the first keyframe and the last keyframe selected. Move either up or down to change their opacity values or left or right to adjust the location in time. OK, we have a few changes to our project file. We can either hit Ctrl or Command Z several times to undo our last actions. But I'd like us to use the File Revert option instead. File Revert basically resets our project to the last saved version on disk. Navigate to the File menu and select Revert. Notice that when you hit yes, you will lose all the changes you made to the project. In fact, this is exactly what we want to do, so click yes. Let's move to the hand tool here. Long press on the hand. I'd like to go first over the zoom tool, and we'll go back to the hand tool later. So long press the hand tool and select the zoom tool, or click Z. The zoom tool allows us to zoom in and out of different areas on the timeline, or in other words, expand or contract the time ruler. To zoom in a timeline viewing area, click anywhere to zoom in by one increment. Click again to zoom in by one increment. Notice that the viewing area is centered to the point where you clicked the zoom tool. Notice also that the time ruler expands each time you hit on the zoom tool. Notice the timestamps here and I click to zoom. The time expands, giving us more precision to work from on this area. To zoom out by one increment, press Alt or press uh, Option on the back and click here. This zooms out by one increment. Let's do it again. Press Alt or Option and click here, it zooms out by one increment. We could zoom out further and further until all clips fit in the wall workable space, but instead hit the backslash key on the keyboard. See, when I hit backslash, all clips now fit in the workable space. One last thing before we move on to the hand tool. You can draw a marquee around a specific area that you'd like to zoom on. So in order to zoom around this middle clip, for instance, just click and drag around the clip and release the mouse. Now let's look at the hand tool. 
so I long press on the zoom icon and I'll select the hand tool or I could just click H. Using the hand tool we can navigate forward and backward on the timeline. With the hand tool I can drag left or right anywhere in the viewing area. The hand tool provides a similar functionality to using the horizontal scroll bar but the hand tool is more precise. We will leave the text tool for now and we will cover the text tool in a later tutorial. In this episode we went through the editing tools in Premiere. The editing tools are generally easy to use and can boost your productivity if used properly. It is tempting to stick to the selection tool to do most of our edits and most of the trimmings, but I advise you to familiarize yourself with the different tools and to use them in your workflow. You will quickly see the benefits of using these tools and you will become more productive. In the next episode, we will focus on the timeline panel. The timeline panel is a major component in Premiere. It is where your video takes shape.